Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, today is a crazy thrift day. Uh, after work, going thrifting. I got two hours to hit it. Uh, I see a bunch of 90s Y2K stuff while I'm in here today. I fill my cart full, uh, pushing it around, waiting to the end to see what I end up taking home with me, but I only leave with a handful of items. Um, I definitely put everything in my cart as I went but I did not look it up until the end uh, to make sure I could get around the store and find all the good stuff before other people were snatching it up um, but I do start here at the CDs uh, one of my favorite things to uh, list and to store as well as I'm getting better and better at uh, finding CDs that are worth selling uh, it's really hard at uh, thrift store price but uh, you can get a CD and you can sell it for 20 something bucks. Uh, it's okay to spend three to five bucks. Uh, they're really easy to list. If you don't want to watch the CD section content, skip to minute 15. That's where I'll start hitting the coats and then uh, the Y2K really pops off when I get into the shirts um, and the pants. So to the sticker color this week is uh, the green so really I'm looking at green trying to see what is new but also if you haven't watched my content before I look for exactly this uh, the signatures on CDs uh, signed copies that was a burned signed copy but it was signed so that's why I'm out here uh, looking at every one of these uh, to see if the CD is worth anything uh, and signed. So signatures add value. But if the uh, artist is still unknown and nobody's buying their CD, the signature is really not worth much. Um, but if there's one fan out there and there's a signature, there's a possibility of selling it. So it's really a judgment call, but I would say I wouldn't risk too much money in a signature of somebody that's not got a footprint on uh, eBay and looks more like they made their own CD I'm not sure what's going on uh, I think everybody's clearing out uh, their homes and their stuff uh, there was so much stuff packed in the thrift today in all the sections it was a, a fun time to look around This one's a, a foreign CD. Usually I look for uh, Japanese or uh, some type of other country version CDs, but they still have like English. Uh, but that one was fully uh, another language. Ended up looking it up on Google uh, and it did not, um, I couldn't find anything that says it sells in America or uh, I had a chance of selling it. So ended up passing on that one. But you see, I put everything in my cart to the right. Um, I don't look them up while I'm looking through. I want to get through the section before somebody else comes in. There's a gentleman who ends up coming to my left and starting to look from the other side. That's very typical when I come into the thrift. If somebody sees me start hitting a rack, uh, they go up to the other side. And spoiler alert, in the shirt section, I make a decision. I'll tell you on which section it is. I was going to go and start at the triple X side and then I decided to start at the other end because there was a guy on the other side. Well, he jumps onto my side and goes to the triple X towards me. Um, I end up covering the area he went through and found a really stellar shirt that I'll tell you later. I used to uh, be a scanner. I would have a Scout IQ and a little scanner and I would scan every CD. Oh, you see this one's a choir, but it's signed by all the people, some type of radio. Um, but I would scan every single one just to try to find. But I'll tell you the scanners had errors. They had false data. Uh, it was still like you had to learn how to read all the data and know when you're kind of getting an inflated price because somebody's going crazy on their pricing on Amazon. 
I, I've really got a trust with eBay um, for CD prices and then uh, Discogs is my backup pricing. I would go to Amazon as like maybe a third level, um, but it's really, I, I usually get pretty comfortable between eBay and Discogs. There's so many common CDs in here. I mean, if you don't know what you're looking for in CDs, it's really hard to uh, not just end up scanning them all. Um, I will tell you, I took um, at least one course on how to better look at CDs, and that's really helpful. Uh, biggest thing is you got to know what's common and not common. And uh, until you get educated by somebody, it's really hard to. Uh, get that eye to uh, sift things a little bit better so you're not scanning all day looking everything up um, I'm sure I missed some some gems and you can let me know in the comments if you see one that I totally missed uh, but I think I got them all I bet you scanners have been through here already by the way um, at this time of day I've probably had 20 people go through the CDs before I've gotten here at least. This was a CD animation book I ended up putting in the cart just to check it out. So I, I've never really looked them up before. When in doubt, look it up. Um, A lot of Tony Robbins in here. It was like somebody donated their set. A couple video games. It's funny, I, I find sign uh, autograph stuff all the time uh, it's really interesting most of the scanners just look at the barcode they don't look at the fronts um, I wouldn't say I pick up everything signed but I definitely find a lot sometimes the signatures are not on the outside too they're on the inside book uh, they'll open the book um, like the cover book and sign in the middle. Um, so usually you can see an indentation if you open it up. Another thing to look for here is sealed CDs. Uh, even if they're common, they might still have some value, especially if you get a set of them. But sometimes on eBay, you find a common CD and you try to sell it. You're wondering how people even sell it because uh, the shipping costs more than what they're selling the, the CD for. So I'm not sure if I'm just missing the best way to sell a CD or ship a CD or if people just have their old pricing and they've never updated it um, for years because uh, I know shipping costs do go up. There's a signed copy right there, Brother Yusuf. Another signed copy of Brother Yusuf. And another one. I'll tell you, I, I end up passing on the Brother Yusuf. I actually have one Brother Yusuf signed listed in my store right now um, I think it's 1999 uh, I find that locally signed here so he must be a local artist uh, but until I sell that one I'm just not feeling confident in putting more of the CD that hasn't sold in my store already
it's such a process to go through these things uh, if you come every day you can go by sticker color but now that they don't put the stickers always on the binding you gotta sort through them anyway to see what's new it's really a pain in the butt but when you come out at 6 p.m. and everybody's been there all day uh, you can't be picky you gotta find the needle in the haystack uh, to get something worth listing in your stores for eBay. I think that was a sealed violin and something or other specialist CD. Looked unique enough that I, I was going to look it up. See if there was any value there. CDs are not as exciting as the clothes are today. My goodness. Let me know if you like this content and you want me to talk through these parts or if you want me to fast forward through the not so exciting parts. Um, like I said, new to YouTube, I want to share the process with you guys. I know some of you guys are media and want to uh, look at books, CDs, and I'm also into that, so I will share when I do that. Um, but if you think uh, this needs to be separate maybe from the clothes, or you're only interested in the clothes versus the CDs, I'd like to hear the feedback. But I imagine there, there could have been a ton of uh, great CDs in here, and this would have been exciting. Uh, so far, it was not that great. Um, I think I pulled off 10 things to look at and left with one item from the CDs. But that's how you got to do it. You got to be picky. Uh, don't sink your money into stuff that doesn't sell. Uh, and do sink yourself money into stuff that uh, has a great return on investment. And the sell throughs high, it's even double good. But for a CD worth a hundred bucks, I'll wait two years, three years. I don't, I'm okay with that. It doesn't take up too much space in my store. These CDs get slippery. Always trying to fall out of my hand. Almost done. One more rack to go. I end up looking that one up. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's because Christmas was just around. I started looking up Christmas CDs. Uh, so now I look up almost all of them uh, to see which ones are valuable or not. Because I've sold some really good uh, Christmas CDs. Uh, so I'm now a fan of selling Christmas CDs. All right, we got through it. Uh, while we're here, might as well look at the DVDs and the VHS just to see if there's anything. Um, but they overcharge for DVDs and VHS here, so I usually don't pick up anything. This is a four CD set, Rod Stewart uh, Storyteller. Um, I put it in the cart to look it up. I will tell you that thing, they're charging $15 for it. It's worth $15 on eBay. Typically, they're about a third of the price of eBay, except for in this section, probably that rule is broken a lot. Um, but they were actually eBay prices in here. Same with this Bruce Springsteen 3 cassette. Another $15 item, and it's worth about $15. Um, and it doesn't sell that well. But yeah, a lot of the CDs were 2 to 5 bucks in here. Uh, and that's about what you can sell them for on eBay. So most of these should be a not pickup unless you're putting it in your personal collection. I 
I know a lot less about DVDs, but I do know uh, some Blu-ray titles that go for really good money. Um, and I know kind of some genres to look for. Uh, but typically when I get here, they're a pick through. All right, we're off to the close. I always start at the racks. Um, you always hope to find something that the other uh, thrifters haven't been through and get it before they go. But you can see my cart. This little cart is already filling up and I haven't even started the close. First Christmas setter, sweater after Christmas. I, I should have looked at the price to see if they're still charging 10 to $15. I thought this could have been a cinchilla or something. It was a North Face. 15 bucks. When eBay prices, or when Goodwill prices it up, throw it in the cart, look it up. Doesn't mean it's worth 15 bucks. Um, but you, if they think it's worth 15 bucks, I want to find out why. There's another North Face. They want 20 bucks for this one. And it, it seemed like superior quality than the other one. I typically don't pick up North Face. Uh, but jackets have been selling really well for me, so I'm willing to put a little bit more work into looking them up. What is this? This is a cool Disneyland uh, Mickey sweatshirt. Really cool print. You can't go wrong with uh, Mickey and Disneyland stuff uh, for the right price. Uh, it's worth it. I think that was an LL Bean vest there. And the lady jumped the line to get in front of me on the coats, started throwing coats over her shoulder uh, before I got there because she saw I was taking coats. So reseller competition is real. Uh, first to get there, it gets it. This had some embroidery on it. Just making sure it wasn't that valuable. This is a Hurley. Look kind of modern and nice. Threw it in the cart to look it up. I think they wanted 15 for that one too. Now check this out. I've never seen one of these. This looks like an Adidas, right? It is totally not Adidas. It's a knockoff looking Adidas. It's called a Dino. Never heard of it. Just another day flipping through jackets. Uh, sometimes it feels grindy, but uh, just switch up your thrift store if uh, it's getting too boring. Going to the same one over and over. Um, you just never know when you're going to hit a day where they had a good drop off or two and there's a lot of new cool product uh, it livens it up I wouldn't say thrift sourcing is my favorite way to fill my eBay store uh, it's a higher price point um, so I make less profit but it's hard to find in the winter especially when it's raining uh, other sources of inventory that's easy to access so the thrift store gets the uh, my business um, and I'm, I, I'm able to do good business. I, I make roughly $2,000 profit a month. And a good majority of that does come from uh, thrift store finds. So um, you typically got to sell between four th about $4,000 worth of product in a month to make $2,000 profit. Being very rough about it, but that's just the general rule. This one had no tag. I was checking the button to see what brand it was. Kirkland Puffer. Does anybody resell Kirkland Puffers? I 
I sell almost every other puffer, but I don't pick up the Kirkland ones typically. This one uh, was interesting. It was different. Uh, it was Asian made. Um, and it just started to look cheaper and cheaper the more I looked at it. So I passed. This is a um, with Beverly Hills Polo Club or U.S. Polo Association. Um, ended up passing on that one. All right, we're into the shirts. Um, they were stacked. Um, but I made a decision to start from this end and versus the other end, which has got the bigger sizes. Um, and the guy jumps. See that guy walking there? He jumps and he starts going from that end, working towards me, which is a very smart move if you want to get there. And uh, the larger sizes do sell well. So I'm kicking myself right now in my head, uh, wishing I had started at the other side, knowing he's going to take all the stuff. He does put... Uh, I think a Hawaiian shirt in his hands and walks off with it. I don't remember. Maybe we can capture it on the video what what one it is, but um, I'll have to show you what in a minute. We'll see what we what I found uh, that he left behind. Um, don't assume everybody knows what you know or is into what you're into. Uh, he might not even be a reseller. He could be looking for himself, but the way he's looking through it, he's definitely a reseller. Um, most people don't go shirt by shirt in every size category uh, throughout the store uh, for themselves. So, I usually pick up uh, USC Trojan apparel. Um, I went to USC, so definitely a fan. I uh, like to get the apparel recycled back to uh, other fans. I pick up other colleges too if it's a name brand college that I think sells well and it's a vintage -y or a really cool print shirt uh, I'll flip it so I want to say this is where I start to get into the chaps uh, Ralph Lauren uh, different sty style shirts it's like the same person stuff got put in here there was a ton of it Could be on the other side now that I think about it. Yeah, looking for just unique, out of the way, different kind of shirts, vintagey shirts. A lot of times I come up with nothing. Uh, it's just there's not much out there. Everything's very common. Um, this is a Masters Polo. Um, they don't really sell that well for me, but I put it in my cart to look up. I, I've heard of other people saying they sell it a lot. Um, so I'll pick it up and look it up, but I don't remember it selling that well. At least out of my store. And, and who knows, I'm probably asking too much. Here's a Hawaiian shirt, but it's got Santa theme on it. It was kind of different. It felt very rayon though, so I moved on. What is this? Interesting tag, all over print. Squid everywhere. Deep sea single stitch definitely going in the cart to look up those are the kind of things you're looking for in the diamonds in the rough something different and it wasn't beat up
They're asking a little bit too much for these polo shirts. If I were to get it two, three bucks, I'd probably pick it up. Definitely not paying nine bucks, seven ninety nine for those. Um, I think they sell between fourteen and nineteen dollars. Seven when you're buying brand new, they're like a hundred bucks. It's crazy. Oh, this is a different kind of Tommy Bahama. Um, it's hard to do this one-handed while you're holding the camera. I ended up putting it back just because I didn't think it looked too great. Um, but you tell me, would you have picked it up? Any pro uh, Hawaiian shirt buyers out there, would you have picked that one up? Uh, Tommy Bahama sits for me for a little bit. So I don't, and they charge 10 to $15 for them now. So I tend to not pick them up unless they're really great prints, especially silk or embroidered. Then, then I'll pick them up. So now we're clearly getting to the section where the other guy was had gone through. I'm expecting to find nothing, right? But you just never know what they didn't see. And look at this. Disney Mickey Hawaiian shirt. It's got goofy surfing. This is the coolest thing ever. So stoked to find that after somebody just went right through that section. Never give up. Never think somebody else is going to find it before you. You just don't know. Um, those are the things that make your day, uh, your reselling trip, uh, for sure. But who knows, maybe I didn't buy it. So at the end, I'll show you uh, what I purchased uh, versus what I left behind. So th this other side is... Um, smaller shirts like larges and below so i typically don't go through every one of them and they have them packed so tight you couldn't even see or view the shirt so i was looking at the outside for anything that really stood out but i was skipping most of it um, but when you find a hawaiian shirt like that um, make note of the size go to the other sections in the store with that size profile and you might find in the sweaters and double XL, um, Disney stuff, um, other cool stuff. So um, it's it all happens to me a lot where I'll find a lot in different sections from the same person's donation. Here's a cow uh, kind of jacket. This cow stuff sells really well for me here. We're pretty close to Berkeley, um, but they're charging a little bit much uh, for that, so I, I pass on it. This is a single stitch sweatshirt. I think it's, yeah, the churros. I, I think it's out of the women's section, but who knows? A lot of times you'll find women's clothes in the men's section, that's just a thing. Oh, and I found this shirt off camera uh, I picked it up because of the print. It's an all-over all print. Uh, really cool. You know, there's another women's clothes, uh, clothing item. Or at least it looked like it to me. Who knows? Not a professional clothing expert. It's a cool flannel. It just feels nice. Uh, it's actually another 90s era uh, structure brand uh, flannel. And a lot of the stuff was uh, pretty nice. Uh, there were some stains on some stuff. Um, but the clothes seem well kept. 
Um, so I imagine that person had all those clothes in their closet and probably didn't wear them uh, for years. So I like the other section for the Hawaiian shirts, but this section I actually find a lot more shirts that I can sell on eBay. Um, so I like to find the more upscale long sleeve shirts in this section. So I go through a lot of stuff here and I'll tell you I put a lot of things in the cart but I end up putting a lot of it back. Um, what I realized is I came out but I didn't have a lot of budget. Uh, this pay period so I was like I can't buy 20 30 items uh, in one go here uh, so it really forced me to do what I should be doing anyway is being very picky about what I'm taking uh, but the thought process is not to go on credit card or borrow money and pay interest fees per month like um, say you run up a ten thousand dollar credit uh, you have to pay like 250 bucks a month just on interest for that and so you need to resell more things just to make up for $250 on your interest for your credit card. Um, it's better to have the money, spend it, uh, make money off that, and not be borrowing it. Uh, so I'm definitely uh, going into that uh, kind of Dave Ramsey mode of pay-as-I-go uh, philosophy. And so uh, when I have limited budget, I just got to uh, pick and choose what items I want to um, put in the store. So typically the higher sell through for higher dollar amount will be the ones I pick out. And the ones that uh, I don't think I can get that much for, I'll put it back. I put this one in the cart because I've never seen it before. Uh, so I wanted to see if there was any value to it. But it was more of a curiosity pickup. But I've seen uh, other resellers, uh, especially ones in the storage lockers, they get all this, they go buy all this equipment like trailers, they get three storage units they're renting per month. I mean, the amount of volume you have to do to pay just all that stuff per month is super crazy. And so I, I like to operate in the part-time space, so my way of budgeting is to work out of my garage. Um, so I have a fixed space limit. Uh, to keep my expenses down and I try not to buy all the different uh, tools and devices and fees for reselling I don't pay into people's monthly reselling groups um, I want to be as low cost every day as I possibly can and just improve every day uh, at finding better more valuable things this is a nice Adidas with tags thing, but it had some embroidery on it that wasn't anything I recognized. I had luck selling some uh, Foot Joy recently with some embroidery for Samco, uh, but I didn't feel like picking up that Adidas. Um, I had never seen this brand Santa Cruz uh, themed sweatshirt, so I picked it up. My daughters also uh, like Santa Cruz, so if I can't resell it, sometimes they'll just take it, uh, put it in their collection. But this is uh, this is the grind of reselling. Uh, I worked a eight-hour day in ten hours. Um, and then I come here, and I was working before I went to that job on this job, listing things in the morning. Um, and then I got to come, and now I'm doing voiceover for the video that you're watching uh, at 10 at night. Uh, so it's a grind to do this, but I enjoy it. I really like it, and uh, if I can help my uh, kids get through college uh, without having any debt, that's kind of the the why right now um, is to to be debt free and uh, help them start off on the right foot uh, better than I got uh, when I went through college.
I uh, I don't even shop at normal stores anymore. I don't know if anybody else has that problem from thrifting, but uh, I source almost all my clothes now from thrift stores and swap meets. I have as many clothes as I want, uh, whether it's business clothes or casual clothes. Uh, they pretty much all come from uh, thrifting, and a lot of them are just new with tags. This one had a cool print, so I pulled it out. Um, I think that's what, like a New Mexico vibe there. I wanted to see what, um, if there was any value to that shirt. But again, this place is combed with resellers. There must be 50 people in the store going to town, uh, looking through every inch. So I'm just trying to be as thorough as I can, uh, see what I can find. Get it in the cart and I'll look it up at the end when I'm done. This is a Lauren by Ralph Lauren, uh, OD green type shirt. Uh, had some yellow fur on it or something, but it looked really solid. Um, <clears throat> I want to say they wanted like, I don't know, $6.99. We'll see if I show the tag. I'm trying to get better at showing the tag so you guys know uh, what my uh, decision point is there, whether I buy it or not. I want to say... Um, probably sells around the 20 to 28 dollar price point and I couldn't find a sold on it but I only found one other listed these are older Levi or, or Levi Western shirts really um, Western shirts have been doing really well for me and mostly they're Wrangler um, but this is the first time I come across Levi blue jean um, denim shirts so I put them in the cart uh, to check them out. I ended up running into this gentleman right here. Uh, we got to chat and he asked about my camera and uh, we, we got to talking about kids and um, reselling and my venture on on doing this channel uh, and he's already got his kids through college and they're all so he's uh he's just having fun reselling for himself now and doesn't have to all the expenses of kids anymore it's always fun meeting people while you're out it's it's another thing uh you in this business you get to meet so many different folks especially if you go to the uh, swap meets um, and sell there, you get to see and, and meet so many people. Also buying, I get to know all the vendors. Uh, so I'm a social butterfly. I like to talk to people. Now we're getting to like, there's a lot of hill figure type shirts in here. Um, chaps. Chaps Ralph Lauren. Um, but I'm looking for something not just ordinary, more exceptional. This is a single stitch sweatshirt. Um, I was kind of staring at it for a while. It had like, I think a Hanes tag. Is that, is that a Haynes? Next time, zoom in, Sean. Um, I'm holding on to it now because he's blocking my cart. Yeah, but just based on the things I'm finding, I'm, I'm getting always super motivated to keep uh, looking because every... Other shirt is something from the 80s, 90s, um, where I'm super stoked to, to just to see that era because 
then you want to find the the ones that are kind of more of the rare uh, sought after type shirts. I like that chap shirt. If it was in my size, I'd probably own it. Another polo, long sleeve. It's actually the same as the other ones. They were just short sleeve and this one's long. I think they're like called soft touch cotton. Just a nice shirt though. Well made. Yeah, you got to look through like a thousand things to find one. It's crazy. Um, it's not as cool as people um, hype it up to be. You definitely got to uh, be on the hunt. This is some type of Western wear. I pick it up to look it up. I think it says Cody James Western wear. But yeah, it's, it's a little grindy uh, reselling, but... Uh, if your Y is strong enough. Here's another uh, 90s shirt. This is Chaps Polo by Ralph Lauren. Uh, it had such a distinguishable pattern. I, I wanted to look it up. There's your hill figure. Uh, very uh, classic 90s. Nice dress shirts. If I was that size, I'd probably pick them up. I probably wouldn't have wore it in the 90s, but I would definitely wear it now. It's another Levi shirt. You can see this is not usual for me when I come to the thrift. I might find two shirts if I'm lucky after going through all of this. So uh, this is just a lot of potentials, uh, more than normal. So I get super excited when I have this much. And you see all the clothes on the ground. These poor workers, uh, they came in behind me and they were just like griping because they have to like put us all back before they, uh, when they close at 8, they have an hour to turn over the store uh, before they go home. And the sooner they're done, the sooner they can leave. But it's so much work at the end of the day. They're, the toy section and the clothes are always blown out. I would not want that job to have to pick up after everybody all day. But uh, they do pay them rather well. I know some of them make like 20 something plus dollars an hour. Uh, so they're not being paid minimum wage. I'm sure you have to be around for a while to make that wage, but. Checking the pants. Um, if you don't know, some of the pants like that I really like to find are the, was it AG, Adriano Goldschmied. Uh, those pants sell really well and they're high quality. Anytime I find those, I'll pick them up. Or at least look them up. But you can see I got this like real... You can almost not wheel the cart anymore. You got to hold it on top and wheel it. Um, we're getting to my, one of my favorite parts of the store. Uh, the jeans. I, f I see this. It looks interesting. And then I see polo. So I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this? I don't even know if I should buy it. I've never bought a pair of polo... Uh, Ralph Lauren pants before but they're distinguishable and I'm sitting here debating it in my head 
and then I find a bunch of stains on it. So I was like, oh, good, that, that settles that. I'm off to the next thing. Um, you'll see the white tag uh, Levi's. I definitely pick up anything with a white tag on it. Um, typically, uh, I believe they're from the 80s, 90s era uh, and worth looking up. Um, also, unfortunately, when you're shopping Goodwill in the jeans, uh, they just ask way too much for uh, a pair of pants to make it worth reselling. So unless you're looking for yourself, uh, this is a great place to shop. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's comparable to shopping probably at Walmart as far as prices go. Um, but you can get a good pair of jeans here um, for the same as a Walmart price. Uh, but I can buy a brand new set of Wranglers for the same price. Just depends what pants you like to wear. But if you don't know, uh, I'm looking at the Levi's especially, but I'm also looking for older uh, style, especially 90s, more hip hop, uh, skater, baggy type jeans. Uh, those do really well for me. Uh, and so I'm always on the hunt to see what I can find. Here's another white tab. Um, kind of the skinnier uh, tapered leg jeans there. Looking for flaws, no flaws, so it makes the pile. Couldn't see, did that say $9.99? Gotta show those tags better. Somebody recently told me that uh, there was a pair of pants from the 30s found and they sold for like $20,000. I I don't know if that's true, but oh my goodness, if I could find a pair of pants that were worth $20,000, I'd be super stoked. Uh, so I don't mind hunting jeans. The older, the better. Uh, these had Big E on them, um, but I believe them to be the more modern Big E uh, style. I think these are made in... They're not even vintage, but they definitely make them to look older, uh, so they're well done. Uh, but I haven't; they haven't been selling that well for me. I think I've sold one out of the five pairs that I have in my store, uh, so they're I'm, they're just not selling for a high price point. These are uh, relaxed fit, uh, I want to say Levi 560-somethings. Uh, anything baggy, you want to look it up. Um, once you get into the Y2K range, uh, prices, uh, value starts to go up. People want that baggy look. Oh, what is this? This is some baggy pants. Echo uh, pants. Uh, for $12.99 though. Oh my goodness. Uh, between Echo, Kuji, um, those do really well for me. Uh, definitely uh, those brands sell really well. And their customers, you know, or my customers, um, they're not afraid to throw an offer at something if they think the price is too high. Um, and usually there's some middle ground there to uh, find a price that I make some money and they, they get what they want and they don't pay a fortune. But some of these pants can go upwards of greater than 100 bucks. So even though the prices are high here, you don't know what they're tagging at high price or low price. So you want to go through it because you never know if you find a $20,000 pair of pants for 20 bucks, um, you're going to pay the 20 bucks, right?
but I expect to not find much. That is a vintage paper tag. They wanted twelve ninety nine for them. One of my pairs of pants I like is Lucky Brand, and one of my thrifts, uh, Goodwills, uh, they charge twenty five dollars for them, which is funny because they're all in the same Goodwill family, but they all have different prices. Like each, it's like they're testing out every area and pricing it differently for whatever reason. Um, so go around and don't assume every thrift has the same prices. You gotta evaluate each thrift independently, even if they're owned by the same Goodwill family. These were women's jeans stuck in the men's, uh, but I ended up picking them up to look them up. I do sell women's jeans. When you buy storage lockers, you get a lot of women's jeans too. Uh, but women's jeans sell for less. Um, but you can usually get around 12 bucks for a pair of good women's jeans. And if you get the Y2K stuff, uh, you get in the, the $20 range. There was a time where Miss Me jeans and all that was um, popping in the $30, $40 range. I'm not sure if that's still a thing. I mean, the ones I have listed aren't selling. But the amount of jeans I've already put in my cart uh, is more than normal. Uh, I typically don't run into them. This many things that I have to look up in a day. So uh, unfortunately somebody had passed that um, had a, all this kind of stuff. Probably came out of one house. They probably wore these baggy jeans with the Hilfiger shirt. A bunch of Urban Star in here. Um, not a big fan of Urban Star. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I seen one pair. I bought it for myself, and it's just it's falling apart. Threads are coming apart. It, just a horribly made pair of jeans. I want to say that's another white tag. And that's a bigger size. Uh, so usually I'm used to finding them in very small sizes. About to make it through the jeans. These are very big jeans right here. I don't even know if I remember the size, but they look like 50s. I'm struggling to push this cart around. So finally leaving the clothes. Uh, off to find other things in the store. And do my perusing. Uh, I don't find a whole lot more. Uh, but I will share right after this. Uh, what I ended up uh, bringing home. Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, Sean here with Unearthed Treasures. This is the end of the day. Uh, we came home and we had a bunch of stuff in our cart, about 40 items. Uh, we looked them up, we pared it down and we got only the ones that were within our budget and uh, that would provide good profit and they weren't overcharging for, or we could at least make around $20 profit. So I'm gonna take you through what we did get. Um, we got this pair of Echo Unlimited Jeans um, very nice baggy set. They're size 32. They're not so they're not super big, but they're still really nice um, And these range from 35 to 75 dollars And we paid 12.99 for them 
So that was a good find. Um, all the other jeans didn't make it. Uh, they were asking $20 a pair, uh, so we passed on that. But if you were to find those same jeans at the market, uh, one to five dollars, they would have been totally worth it. All right, another one. Uh, we saw this one there. It's an all over print. It's called Deep Sea. It's an extra large t shirt. It's um, single stitch from the 90s. And these are listed. One is already sold for uh, $45, I think. And there's another one listed for 50 bucks. So uh, we'll get between 40 and 50 bucks for this. So a really good find. This one is a Mickey's uh, hoodie with a fleece lining in it. Um, I'll say that I, th I didn't think I was going to be able to resell this and the family was going to dibs it, but uh, nobody wanted it. And so I get to resell it. Um, it resells for about $25. Um, and I paid $8.99 for it. And just to recap on the other shirt, we paid $5.99 for the, the all over print jellyfish shirt. This one I did off camera, but I kind of showed that I did have it and picked it up. Um, this, I just saw the all over print pattern and was like, oh, this is cool. Let me go look this up. Um, so this one is a, um, the territory ahead. Um, they sell between 25 and $40. Got this one for six bucks. Probably not the highest sell through rate, but still a really nice shirt, really nice pattern. So I think it's, um, there's a couple other listed like it, but I think we'll be able to sell this within 90 days. Next shirt uh, is Lauren by Ralph Lauren. Uh, it's a button snap shirt, OD green. And we paid $7.99 for it. Um, and we can get uh, probably between $29 and $35 for this. I couldn't find this exact model shirt, uh, but we saw others like it. Now, if you remember, I went to one end of the aisle of the shirts versus the extra, extra large side. There's a guy who went through uh, to make sure to go through before me. Well, when I went through that section, I did find a Hawaiian shirt, and this is what I got. See this Mickey, uh, Disneyland Mickey Tiki with goofy uh, surf shirt. Uh, right in the section, it's double extra large. Uh, perfect, it's rayon, so it's not probably the finest material, but really nice shirt. Um, these go for about $40. They sell, there's one sold for $40, um, but there are a lot more listings. So a uh, really good night uh, for thrifting. I would say that's not the average experience between 6 and 8 p.m. when it closes out here in California, but um, that's a good night for us. If we had more money, we might have bought a couple more things. Um, the store seemed to be really packed right now with thrifting stuff, so I think there's a lot of people clearing out their houses after Christmas. That Christmas aisle was just busting with stuff. So we paid uh, $51.93 for everything. Um, we think we're gonna get about $170 of profit you know, on the low end. So that's about, or we're going to make 170 and we'll probably get about 118 profit once you take cost of goods off there. So that's not a bad night for two hours worth of work. Um, we'll see you on the next one. I'm Sean with Honor Treasures. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you want more videos like this. Um, keep grinding, keep learning, have fun, and most importantly, be kind.